As part of the Green Schools Initiative, the majority of OPS schools are getting ready to start a cafeteria recycling program or improve an existing program in order to reduce the amount of trash that is sent to the landfill. Presently, OPS schools produce enough trash per year to equal a football field piled 75 feet with trash. The majority of this trash comes from the cafeteria. However, much of this waste can be recycled, which is why it is important for all schools to implement successful recycling programs in the cafeteria. So how do you start or improve a cafeteria recycling program? Even though it will be slightly different at each school, it's really quite easy. And this video will help explain some suggestions and general approaches to developing a successful cafeteria recycling program. But first, what is recyclable at OPS? The common items from the cafeteria that can be recycled are empty milk bottles, water bottles, plastic lids, empty juice boxes, plastic utensils, plastic cereal bowls, yogurt cups, salad containers, and aluminum cans. It's important to remember that all recyclable beverage and food containers should be empty of excess liquids and have the majority of food removed. All recyclables should also go in the same container. At a minimum, all schools are encouraged to at least recycle empty juice cartons and plastic milk bottles. Items that cannot be recycled as part of OPS's recycling program consist of clear plastic wrapping around plastic utensils, plastic bags, chip bags, styrofoam cups, used napkins, and disposable trays. For more information about what is recyclable and what is not, go to the OPS Green Schools Initiative webpage. You can also obtain files for standard OPS recycling signage on this site. So, what are the keys to having a successful cafeteria recycling program at an OPS middle school? There are 10 key elements which we will describe and illustrate to you by showing you Beverage Middle School's cafeteria recycling program. The 10 key elements consist of the principal or key administrator is supportive of the cafeteria recycling program and conveys the importance of recycling to the entire school. He or she also clearly communicates expectations regarding recycling to the head building engineer, kitchen manager, and any staff assigned to assist with the lunch period. The head building engineer and custodians actively support the cafeteria recycling operations and take full bags of recyclables to the recycling dumpster. At some schools, head building engineers and custodians even help direct students at the cafeteria recycling station. A teacher or staff member who is assigned to the lunch period stands by the recycling station, which is near the tray return area. They also direct and encourage students to recycle. It's also important that the recycling containers look different from the trash cans. Beverage uses very distinctive recycling containers obtained from a grant. However, schools can repurpose old trash cans to serve as recycling containers. To make them more eye-catching, most schools paint them different colors or a distinctive color and place lids on them with a very large hole cut in the top to make it obvious that they are for recycling. Signage is also very important and should be attached to the recycling container or right above it on the wall. Digital files for signage can be obtained at the OPS Green Schools Initiative website. The suggested approach is for students to dump out extra juice and milk in the trash before placing the empty container in the recycling bin. Typically, the trash cans are double bagged. However, it is okay just to have one bag. OPS custodians do not report any leaking problems with this approach to handling excess liquids. As you can see, Beverage Magnet Schools demonstrates a different option. Students pour excess liquids into dump buckets before placing the empty containers in the recycling bin. 
If a school prefers this option, the head building engineer or custodian typically empties the bucket into a kitchen drain and runs water after dumping the liquid to prevent odor issues. In addition to regular staff members, responsible students can also be asked to stand at the recycling station and help direct other students. It is very important for schools to educate students and staff about the cafeteria recycling program and what is recyclable, modeling how to dump excess liquids in the trash and how to place all recyclables in the same container can be very beneficial. It is beneficial to report back to students and staff about the success of the school's program. Some schools pilot or test out a new cafeteria recycling program with a certain lunch section first before rolling it out to all of the other lunch sections. In addition to recycling in the cafeteria, it is beneficial to have kitchen staff recycle cardboard boxes, cans, and plastic containers produced from preparing meals. Staff only need to quickly rinse cans or plastic containers that have sticky or heavy food residue in them, such as pasta sauce. Again, in summary, here are 10 key elements to make a successful middle school cafeteria recycling program. It is important to note that schools do not have all of these elements in place to have a successful cafeteria recycling program. They are just general recommendations. As Beverage and many other middle schools can attest to, Implementing a cafeteria recycling program is rather simple and very important. OPS would like to thank the following middle schools for helping inform the content of this video. Beverage Magnet School, Lewis and Clark Middle School, Monroe Middle School, and Morton Magnet Middle School. This video was produced by the Music and Media Tech Honors Practicum class from Omaha North High Magnet School.